Leave. Put I don't the WD wanna... 40 down. <laughs> 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 Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, mm, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and that's you, watching us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got a big show packed to the brim with things to talk about surprising in this month, because, you know, we're still like very much in the dry season, but the game industry and the Linux stuff just keeps on coming out, so we're here tell you about it what do we have this week pedro we get to talk about the next fest but we're, we're just gonna hold off for that because we, we got a lot to say about it yeah. hopefully <laughs> hopefully jordan <laughs> just doesn't randomly get muted again <laughs> or maybe i'll just <laughs> we'll never know we'll never know so we like to play a little bit of catch up, possibly a little bit of mustard right at the beginning of the show. Just see what's going on, see what's new. I relish it. And um, what are the things this week? I should probably, do you think I should unmute Jordan or? Has he <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I, I you'll probably myself. have to play catch up. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we're going to be playing the muted game this evening, by the way. So stay tuned to that. It might make more sense if you watch the video version. I'm like, why are people randomly talking? <laughs> Got, got the pre pre super shows in for that extra context, right? Right. Um, so we play Trackmania. If you're looking for a uh, new crippling addiction in your life, or if you want to revisit a crippling addiction that you've gotten over, we do that on Tuesdays and Fridays with classic Trackmania, Trackmania Squared, not the classic classic, but you know the new Trackmania, which is now the classic Trackmania. We got a server. We do that. We get together 14 new tracks each and every week, and we do it again on a points match on Fridays. But now we're mixing in a little bit of the new track mania, the current one, the one the kids are playing track mania 2020. And we had a good time with that. Uh, we're doing some different things. I had to explain to these two what a track mania RPG map is <laughs> a role playing game. And uh, we loaded up a portal map and a half life map, which was kind of fun. You can imagine puzzle platforming with a racing car. So, uh, it, it happened is where I'm at with that. Like it, we <laughs> I, have, I have, I have an unrelated question for you. Yes. Whenever someone expands the acronym RPG to rocket propelled grenade, does it upset you? Cause that's not what it actually stands for. It's like our, it's like a Russian word. Nope. No, that uh, bugs, bugs the hell out of me when people are like, Oh yeah, it's a rocket propelled grenade. Like that's not what it is. I just think role playing game. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Like I, yeah, it, 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 it's it's either an explosive launcher or a role playing game, either or. <laughs> Sometimes both. Could be a little bit of column A. Could be column B. Uh, Sunday was kind of interesting. Got up Sunday on. It's like a new thing I'm trying to make sure I do every Sunday is uh, we do like a Linux Creators Cast. You can watch me sit and work on all the super sexy, fun parts of making a podcast, like removing breath noises and other exciting things. But I'm there for about two and a half, three hours on Sunday on YouTube and you can stop in and join in, ask some questions and uh, see how the sausage is made, how I stick all the video and audio components together to get you a podcast, uh, hopefully on Sunday evenings, but a couple of people showed up, which is good. Asking creators, having a good time with that. Just to let you know, we will be doing it again this Sunday. I got some new, uh, well, I got a new thing to play around with them that we're using right now. I got this. Jordan. Oh no. <laughs> see what I got. I got art. Mm. It's art. The whole Jordan. art? In the, I have a, all of art. Art, art, art accessories? <laughs> it goes art, 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 art. <laughs> It's art Linux? I have an art DTI. Now I'm not talking about <laughs> Art and blister packaging. The, this really is the worst timeline ever. <laughs> so, 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 it's plastic, so, Pedro, so dare say it's modern? <laughs> I, I, I I have to assume that DTI does not stand for dick touching interface. I mean, it can. You won't be nasty about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you try hard enough. Docking. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's a type C dock, all right. Mm. <laughs> so this, this is used for lecture halls, auditoriums, or classrooms. <laughs> Get it? Go 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 on. You're, yeah, you're, I, I, I mean, still still not convincing me. It's not a dick touching interface. Yeah, uh, it, it reads right here: it, art accessories, creative audio solutions in cool little boxes. 
Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Sure. I still have no idea what it does. Well, we'll, we'll never know. It's a mystery forever and ever. So what is it? It's dual transformer isolator. Uh, as so, as opposed to like a single transformer isolator. Uh, yeah. So it's like okay. two of them in one box. Is it like sort of like a like a humbucking type effect? Kind of like, like a, a channel one, channel two type thing. Okay. It's basically a big version of this guy. So oh, the is, private pile. Yeah, yeah. yeah private got one, pile. Got one of these. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, these work. These are cheap. This is PHE three hundred. Been using these for years. And inside of this, uh, there's two little wee baby transformers. Mm-hmm. And um, transformer is really good for breaking any type of ground loop, ground noise you might have in my system. I needed the big version of this. I needed mm. a big version of this. And Art made a really nice big version of this. It made it was like instead of like the DTI, it would be the eight, whatever they would use for eight TI. Mm. Yeah, then radio. Yeah, A and D would come and sue him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this has got two on it. I'll probably do like a little video on these because I get like a stack of stuff. I don't know where to put it. It's like here, v- random audio hardware bullshit VIN things. Uh, yeah, look look for that playlist. But it's a bigger version of that that can handle line level. And I, I wanted to be able to use uh, the headphone out on the RME AIO Pro which for whatever moon reason, there was a different grounding in beaten uh, source. This thing, electricity and grounds, man, it's weird. Between the stuff on the rack and the PC only through the headphone out- output. That was it. Everything else was perfectly fine. No problem. I've never had a problem. You plug in a headphones into the RME directly. <laughs> you know, like when you're moving your gerbil around a little yep. bit and you can hear that. This fixes that. That okay. is, yeah, it's like one of those weird things of like, I don't like that. Beat. Does it affect anything? Not really, but I want, I, I want it not to be there. <laughs> I can still hear it. Yeah, I know it's there. And it's it bugs me. <laughs> and I want to use those headphone. I wanted to use the headphone out directly on it. So, uh, plus I probably thought it's going to, I got this off eBay. Uh, I don't know how much these are. Uh, probably like, I don't know, whatever these are new, uh, like 30 bucks on eBay. So there you go. Yeah, that, that's my story. Come uh, hang out with me on uh, tomorrow's. Yes, there. Ta-da. How about you, Jordan? Uh, uh, I see I, that you've uh, unfortunately gone back to huffing WD-40. Unfortunately. I mean, listen, when my, my parents were spraying me with this when they wanted me to get out of the house, because, you know, when something <laughs> when something moves and it shouldn't move, you, you apply duct tape, and when you want something to move and it doesn't move, you spray with WD-40. Uh, you know what? That would probably stop certain things from moving if you hit it once or twice yeah just in the, in the back of the throat <laughs> or uh, <laughs> like up the nose <laughs> yeah. a little bit of flame indeed no it's been pretty pretty uneventful week just been working really really hard barely barely staying awake you know the the usual mm. pedro, pedro knows how it is he's living the working stuff life what, what's yeah. on the uh, pillow back there <laughs> um a pack of gum yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, hey, hey, audience, I'm working with what I got, all right? Pack of gum, a, uh, one, one, an L-shaped uh, quarter-inch audio cable. That ah, nice. that's what, okay. And then there's just like a power cord, like a standard PSU. Mm. Like from here, it looked like you do, you had some type of like PCI bracket, maybe with some... I, 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 I can see that, uh, spe- spe- spearmint gum. No, I, yeah. I, I, started, I started actually putting stuff into the drawers in this desk. So that was the... <laughs> One set of cables that didn't get thrown into a drawer, mm. I guess. Pedro Mateus, do you have any tales to mesmerize, petrify, uh, analyze, or stupefy us? Uh, you know, you mentioned about um, getting back into some deep-seated um, addictions that you may have had in the past. And uh, yeah, no, that happened to me today. Uh, APB Reloaded, which is a really bad game. No one should play it, but I got really into it back in the day. And then it didn't work on Linux because it had some weird anti-cheat battle eye nowadays. Mm. Uh, and the developers finally enabled, they sent the email to uh, battle eye to say, we would like this on Linux, please. And someone figured out the magic launch commands to make it work. Mm-hmm. And the developer has now confirmed and said, yes, we will have this. Uh, we enabled uh, battle eye and we will have a proper build with the now next update. You bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Two days ago, I saw that there was an update to um, Epic's Easy Anti-Cheat uh, on Steam. Hmm. 
Oh. <laughs> so I, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, I wonder what that's for. There it is. Okay. No, no. Th- 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 that's battle eye. <laughs> yeah, but it's all tied into one package, though, isn't it? No, the, 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 there's two different um, runtimes. There's one for easy anti-cheat and one for battle eye. There's one for battle so eye? Independent? I, 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 I guess yeah. I got to go check if that fixed uh, what was Fall Guys. If we can play that without the Something got updated in easy. I don't have anything for battle eye, then. Something got updated in EAC this week, two days ago. Okay. I mean, I mean, I know, I know they're, they're I probably pretty... got the update, but I never realized. Oh, I, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if Dead by Daylight is working now. There's, mm. there's like, the, there's, a, there's a couple of those games that are using that need an easy anti cheat update that you know that them that, that might be. Do you think like Tim's actively sitting there going like, oh, fine, here's some more money? Like they're extorting. Epic. They're like, hey, you know this EAC thing? We can just make that work now. You know, oh, oh, oh what's that now? Give some more money. Okay, yeah, no, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah he, I mean, when periodically when he surfaces his head from like, like we'll the see pool next of money month. to get oxygen, right. he's like, mm-hmm. hey, Tim, we need some easy anti cheat money. Go away. <laughs> That's how I have to imagine it at this point because there's just like no reason not to enable it. Like, you would have to hate money, right? And I got we're good, which uh, no game development <laughs> studio ever. We're like, nah, nah, man, we're fine. <laughs> Unlike the horse, which is never fine with what it has. I mean, the horse is flat broke because it spent all its money on instant lotto tickets. <laughs> never said it was a smart horse. It's the steam. Let it update. All right. Let's talk about and some yes. demos. There, there's another next fest. Yes, uh, the current fest, as the case may be, is uh, available now. You can go just find demos of whatever game you happen to have wishlisted that isn't out yet, from the sixth to the thirteenth. Oh, by the what time this comes out, it's probably too late. Oh, that's hey. a Valve thing. It's like, is that a stack of Oreo cookies? No, that's that's a Valve thing. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. Gabe's stack of Oreo cookies. Yeah. Don't touch. <laughs> That's the big valve that they have in their office. Uh, but yeah, it is fish volleyball. You probably oh, fuck yes. Um, <laughs> you probably you are a fish. been you on Steam volleyball. long enough that you experienced at least one next fest. I actually got into it and I tried a couple of games. The new System Shock remaster remake that oh, they're doing. Darkest Dungeon, come on! Just and they um, boomer shooter called Coven. Which, uh, it, the start of Coven is very, very good, but unfortunately, both of those games, uh, didn't allow me to play with the okay, directional the arrows on the keyboard. I'm going crazy. <laughs> I watched, um, Karn Karnid? Co Carnage? Yeah, he played this Void Train thing, man, like, okay. six months ago. He probably had access to an early build. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Darkest Dungeon 2 is out of Epic Purgatory and now is available on Steam. At least oh, it's out of Epic Early Access. They've got all the best yeah. stuff. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, something <laughs> like that. Um, dark, dark, dark and Darker. That was the one that looks really cool uh, to me, at least. But probably going to need some people to play that with. Otherwise, you're playing with randos. This is got Flying Pigs in it. Okay. Yeah, I did play um, Darker Than Dark. Um but that was uh, the previous play test that they did. And I think I made it almost to the end one time, but I never actually finished the dungeon. There was always someone else ganging me. Yeah. These are all Ludix ones. They finally added the uh, thing where we could sort of see complaining online works. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, so these are all going to come to Linux. These are, uh, there it is. One. Coven. Coven. <laughs> oh, that's boomer shooter bullshit. Yes. <laughs> I'm a simple man. <laughs> Finally, we'll t- we'll talk about Into the Sun in a minute. Uh, I went through a couple of these. I had a good time. Here's what I like. I, I'm just super excited about the Steam Next Fest and the fact that we're getting them with a greater frequency because th- this is bringing back demos, kids. This is what this is doing. Mm-hmm. This is giving an incentive to make a demo for your game, which is so much better than and it's so much easier to try your demo, try it out. It's like, hmm, don't I like this? Yeah, fine. I'd like to buy it instead of having to go through, at least for me, I'm going to say the, you know, yes, I know you're going to say, Hey, steam, uh, refunds super easy, which they are. That's still more trouble than I care for when I just want to nibble on something like, Hey, do I might, might like this might not. Let me try this. Oh, you You know what? Not my thing. And, uh, just continue about my day instead of having to go through a refund process. And I think demos should have never died out and I'm glad that they're back and this is they're coming back. 
Do you, yeah, do you think stuff like uh like Game Pass is gonna like kill demos dead once you can like pay a flat fee and then just like try actually like try the game before you um, like commit to it? Okay, so well, it depends on uh, everything would have to be on Game Pass then. Yeah, or or at least it would it would de- it would decentivize people who are already on Game Pass from like or Game Pass like services from putting. If you already get that right? Game Pass check, you're probably like whatever. Yeah, maybe. But I, don't know. I mean, net net. Next Fest is getting like new games coming out and you want people to look mm-hmm. at it, which are, you know, these aren't going to be yet on game pass. These, this is like early access done, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You th- think this is it. proper early access. It's just a demo little, you know, vertical slice or whatever the developer wants to do, but it's a good way to show off the game and you don't need a physical CD or DVD to put a bunch of demos in. Just put them on steam. <laughs> No, it's, Put it's, them on a thumb drive, it's, make it collectible, and people will buy it. Stick them on a VHS tape, or like you can put data, br- dude. They make yeah, I know, VHS yeah, I backups. Yeah, I, I know. They, they used to have like Commodore PC games on like like cassette tapes, right? Like you have to spool we, the entire thing. hundred percent. Uh, yeah. Yes, Pedro. <laughs> uh, thumb drive collectibles, <laughs> the one for Project Warlock specifically. <laughs> it's lipstick. It, it's doesn't. a shell. <laughs> yeah, it's lipstick. <laughs> Can you stick it up your butt? I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> Let's talk about a magic moment, a decking moment, a significant moment for PC gaming moments in the years of moment. Yes, yeah, so it's a textbot article. Of all time. Uh, it, it is a textbot article, so there's your warning. You know? so that's why it's here. You don't normally get the Steam Deck. <laughs> showing up on those tech spots and you're like oh. yeah uh, it is uh, uh, Jordan we'll get into it a bit more but yeah it is the Steam Deck and they make the comparison to oh like, I see what it is both of you are being judgy about this man's socks aren't you yes uh, no the socks are awesome uh, and the dog is awesome and the Steam Deck the, the, is awesome the, the, the dog but... wants to eat those socks though <laughs> that, that's obvious that dog is those yeah. socks <laughs> the, the article goes in and it starts the, the obvious comparisons like yeah you had like the Game Boy and the Nintendo DS and you had the PSP and then the PS Vita which demonstrated that Sony was just basically useless uh, and then Valve itself they started uh, with the their big hardware things with the Steam controller and the Steam machines which didn't go so well so eventually, all of that kind of culminated after Ioneo and One Netbook and all the others kind of kind of started doing their own um, handheld PCs. Valve came out with the Steam Deck on um, February twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, and everyone, or at least most people, uh, seem to really, really like it. I know I like mine. Uh, and they also compare it to uh, the netbooks and tablets, uh, like the early 2010s. Uh, and I, I was a big fan of netbooks. Uh, I from and the we, Asus Triple E, yeah, <laughs> Asus Triple E PC 1005 HD, and then the Toshiba N550D. It's yeah, I, I really like that form factor. But the Steam Deck as you know, proud and uh, full of prowess as it is, uh, as a general use Can machine. Can it be full of prowess? It could. New word. Absolutely. I'm not entirely sure prowess is a thing. Is that a new word, man? It's, my <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, but, it's a, yeah. a lady who's proud. She's a prowess. It inherently, it We're is add it a. to the uh, English leprechaun. Yeah, yes. Oxford, Oxford's Added to the English, English leprechaun. leprechaun. Yes, <laughs> not the Irish, not the American leprechaun, the English one. <laughs> what? We I mean, well, we can't add it to empty. He's he's. We, we need to buy the empty 2.0 license if we want to add yes. more words to empty. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. No, I. It, this is very much the Steam Deck is very much obviously a gaming machine, and the um, the thing that still gets me is that the most popular games console released in 2022. Is a Linux computer. Yeah, this How about uh, that? <laughs> and like so, the, the, this textbot article it's it's a bit long. It'll it'll give a Pedro Mateus article a bit of a run for its money. But and it has a couple this dubious. Is longer. That's yes. Um, as not not collectively though. Uh, it's also got a couple <laughs> dubious points that are all, all ultimately harmless pieces of like unclear information about like the Linux ecosystem. But you know, if you've been living under the rock for under a rock for the past couple of years, this is pretty good. Previously on. 
One thing that it does bring up that I think is kind of an underexplored point is that given how fucking expensive everything is now, with like good new PC parts and whatnot, having a very popular platform that ultimately brings down the average spec does a lot to make games a lot more accessible. There are games that are um, that were really, really pushing the the uh, the boundaries of what hardware can do, and people were becoming less and less able to play them. Uh, so we're 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 seeing something like a Steam Deck be able to make. Uh, to be able to like provide a platform that is a lower hardware target allows or will encourage game makers to maybe target something that can run at like 40 hertz reasonably well and then you know more people can play it even on like non-steam deck machines which i think is ultimately a good thing for like steam growth and pc gaming growth in general well i also think it's a uh, very nice to see that our steam deck uh, so far has proved to be inflation proof it's amazing huh yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> old, old ass kit works. yeah <laughs> Pretty sure Valve is taking a loss, at least on the uh, four hundred dollar version, the, the one that I bought. Um, Even more amazing, being inflation proof. Yeah, uh, and they're probably with the current level of hardware and the, what prices are right now. They're probably just about breaking even with the two hundred and fifty uh, gig version. It's the five twelve that they're probably making at least some money on because. Going from a 250 gig NVMe SSD to a 512 does not $150 justify. Screw you, Pedro Mateus, with your <laughs> minuscule, let, 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 not man. worth my time storage. My deck's going to be two terabytes. All over. No, it. no, it won't. Yeah, well, look can't at buy this. it anymore. I don't care. Framework <laughs> said I could get a two terabyte SSD for my Steam Deck. From the framework marketplace? Why is that different, Pedro? That, that sounds weird. Uh, framework, you may know them as the people who make the uh, disassemblable and the fully repairable laptop. Well, uh, they're also selling bits. And uh, conveniently enough, their laptops are also compatible All with right, 2240 NVMe SSDs. I go your house and you have one of these, we're going to break up. I'm not going to be a friend anymore. I don't know what I'm that sorry, is. I, I got some bad I don't hate that. Fans. That's just a portrait screen with uh, a landscape screen with, with a leather strap buttons. on top i'm sorry that's that's hatred towards is it, hold, yeah, hold on that, is that, is, that's is that running windows thing. 11 because when you close the doors it's it's like a briefcase and you can take it with you does it got like double yeah. cameras on it is that was that what's that supposed to i be think those bottom? are speakers i don't know <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's windows 11 though so i immediately hate it yes yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it is, uh, it, it, it's very convenient that they're also selling the SSDs and going, oh, this Steam Deck thing is popular. Let, let's sell some more. So they have $300. That That's awesome, but not available in the UK. And uh, I'm not paying $300 for a two terabyte SSD. I want the one terabyte one. Uh, those have been around for a while, but they're like 150 pounds. Under 100 pounds, please. Does anybody make one. that, Pedro? <laughs> uh, they used to be under 100 pounds for the one terabyte ones, but not uh, the 2230s. The, those are um, expensive. Yeah, because they're a little <laughs> short, fucky, small run. Um, well, yeah, you're sp speaking of small run. They're not run, that small uh, run. All of the Dell Latitudes that we get at work have 2230s nowadays. So what you're telling well, me is at, at, at least for framework, it's... thieving them from your job like a normal person, you're going to complain about that. Know. No, because the ones that we get uh, for the job are 250 gigs, and I already upgrade. got Listen. one of those on eBay for yeah. like 30 pounds. So, mm. <laughs> well, doesn't matter. It's a moot point. They're all sold out anyways. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it was quick too. It was like, it was like same day, like in yeah. the evening. They're like, oh yeah, oh, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it was some single digit amount of hours between uh, yeah. that being announced and like, and they're gone because I guess people want two terabyte. I, I feel the same way. All right, infinitely better solution than four five hundred and twelve gig micro SD cards. It is, but I also run into the situation of the same reason I don't have 512 gig SD cards because that's a lot of shit to lose at one time. And that's all I think about once I get over, like, dude, even like 100 gigs, my brain still hurts when I'm holding a micro SD card. I'm like, what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 SD card that I have on the Steam Deck is a 512. Mm -hmm. It was the first 512 uh, SD card I ever bought. It's like, okay, let, let's do that. And they're so reasonably <laughs> priced, too. They're not... Yeah. You're like, oh, this is oh, I just, like, all right, I'm it's when you get to the terabyte. That's yeah. when the price so, goes a bit. 
So speaking speaking of PS Vita, I had like an old cell phone that had like an integrated MP3 player. I remember it was a Sony one, so you had to buy like the Sony memory cards. Mm. I remember that four gig thing costing like ninety dollars, and it's oh, like, yeah. why, why? Yeah. So the- what are we gonna do when um, Sony does the state of play in a couple of weeks and announces their new handheld? Uh, it's not I like you're look gonna be forward able to, buy to one. it surviving more than a year. They're gonna I mean, call it the Yita. It's gonna be throwable. <laughs> I, I, I mean, they can't they can't keep the PS5 in stock now. So, oh, I mean, they we'll got to do something, right? Got to make some money somehow. You're like, man, uh, gotta, sell, gotta sell some more Steam games. This is Sony. They had a really good thing going with the initial PSP release because people could develop their own uh, homebrew and do a bunch of interesting stuff. And then Sony's like, oh, people can use this for piracy. We're gonna lock it down. And that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> well, spe- speaking of people who aren't good at software security, let's talk about Valve. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they had a little bit of a snafu. Um, there was, uh, so... Uh, they, at least uh, they didn't react poorly. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Valve reacting poorly? Never. Well, uh, so uh, an engineer was able to exploit a flaw that was available in Dota 2 via custom game modes. Um, Dota 2 uses uh, the V8 JavaScript engine, which is fairly widely deployed. It's Google's JavaScript library. Mm -hmm. Google put out a warning that says, hey, update your version of this library because there's a remote code vulnerability execution or remote code execution vulnerability present. Uh, And Valve was like... Nah, brah. So uh, this guy uh, came up with a couple exploits, including a uh, something that contains a file called evil.lua, uh, and was able to uh, release a couple of custom game modes that allowed you to allowed him to re- execute uh, remote code on your system. And it even had some nasty like persistence tech because you could exploit it in a way that was not would not immediately surface and be able to receive uh, command and control uh, fairly subtly as well. So moral of the story is you got to update your damn V8 libraries because if your VM is compromised, then all your code is fucked. Well, I mean, it's not yeah. a big deal. I mean, Valve immediately patched it, though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah in <laughs> a year and a half? Immediately, no, yes. 15, 15 months. months. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Basically, remotely exploitable uh, heap corruption, as Jordan already mentioned. Uh, for 15 months, uh, Valve didn't do anything until someone was actively exploiting it. For the third time, three so different Pedro, game modes. Pedro, that what you're person. telling me is the guy who reported should be grateful he didn't get banned. Uh, it was a vast. It was the uh, a vast antivirus people that reported it to Valve. So <laughs> uh, it would have been bold of Valve to just like, do you work for a vast? No, you can't be on uh, Steam. If, if you have a vast running on your Windows machine running Steam, you just can't. Play I just think it's like modus operandi for Valve as you reported up. Clearing that, security hole, they would just uh, block your account. Like they I mean, that, the truck that, simulator guy. Yeah. That's the Oracle strategy. <laughs> that that or suit. <laughs> yeah, or, or uh, you're Thomas Duda and um, <laughs> the developer of uh, Euro Truck and American Truck just Simulator. Just remember, ladies and gentlemen, why <laughs> Valve overall is good. There's some derps working at Valve too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think they care about Dota anymore. It's no longer like the big darling thing. It's the Steam Deck now. We'll There's see somebody, how long somebody, that lasts. Somebody's sitting right now. It's the one person at Valve that listens to this show that's got a little tear rolling down their own. The, <laughs> the one person who listens yeah. to the show is also the one person in charge of Dota. Just one little single tear. I, 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 I don't know. But he's probably sitting next to the one guy in charge of TF2 who's just taking a massive bong head. He's like, oh, dude, you have vulnerabilities in your code. <laughs> All right. So we were talking about Next Fest. That means we got a bunch of games to talk about this week. Up first is a uh, race game. I like racing games. They're pretty cool. And this one's got the look. It's got the feel, but does it have the power? We're talking about Formula Retro Racing World Tour. A retro racer that's been updated for the modern age, so you can read, oh man, nostalgia, nostalgia goo all over it. Ah, fusing 90s style arcade, realistic physics. So that's where they fucked it up right there. Um, yeah. Did they have to be realistic physics? Yeah, that's really. <laughs> okay. You might remember a little game called Virtua Racer back in the arcades. And I think it was also on the Mega Drive because it had used like Saturn, Sega. I think. Might have been at some point. Uh, Saturn was Daytona USA because uh, that Daytona. looks a lot very Daytona USA. Um, <laughs> a, lot, a lot more polygonal. And um, this rolled up. And the thing I didn't like about uh, virtual racing was uh, you know, this looks like what my brain interpolated virtual racing to look like. 
you know, back in the day, which it didn't, you know, just, <laughs> you know very flat shaded polygons and, you know, they're going, going for that look. Um, but then you start playing virtual racing, like, oh no, this is a simulation game. Boo. But you know what? There is a, oh, this is even a VR mode. This is part of the next fest. There's a native Linux version that you can download. A couple of things going against it. At least me, you know, it's arcade racing, but it's, a, it leans heavy into the simulation, kind of like Forza type stuff. Also, no online multiplayer, which is also like, boo. That, that's what? the big one. It's like, I, I, if you're going to bother to do thing, what, pick it online? Come on. I'll, I'll, it's, 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 there's, a, there's a little bit of a title gore here too, but there's also, it's also no car racing, highway driving simulator, real parking driver, Sim Speed Traffic Deluxe 2023. So, <laughs> but Jordan, you can drive on the Alabama Oval. Okay, well, then what, one chair then, and the Tokyo Drift. Too fur- <laughs> that, that's too fast. I wonder too if you know how they live in Tokyo. <laughs> what do we need to run it on Linux? Uh, any graphics? It needs a oh, mouse and a keyboard. Four. There's a bold claim. All right. gigahertz quad core 40 megabytes of ram sorry four Four. megabytes of ram and one is the minimum one megabyte of ram you need one ram so so it it can run on your deck alpha is what i'm hearing (laughs) probably maybe i don't know i don't know you feel like snipping some traces (laughs) but you know saying on the uh, the racing genre i guess uh we have um Super Tux board. No, sorry. I mean, Slope Crashers. That's, uh, <laughs> it is, if, if you're looking at that video and going, okay, that, that, that's got a little bit of Tux racer to it. Hold on a second. Uh, and, uh, you see that under, underwater level there that, that, that just screams Super Tux cart, but this one is not free. But at Pedro, least I can not ride yet. on a frying pan. Yes. Right. And, uh, grinds the, um, the rail. <laughs> And it is, it's not available, it's not out yet. You can ask to join the play test or you can download the demo, which oh, they, uh, with the uh, multiplayer combat snowboarding showcase, they made the demo also online. So you can have a go and see if you like it. Uh, in fact, we might just do that after oh, we're man, recording that one today. Of those anorexic raccoons. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, right there. I, I get I get some big SSX tricky vibes, and that game was fucking fun on the PS2. So if this they can is, give me a little bit of that, yeah, that right. Would, just, like, yeah, the trailer it looks good. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, re- planned release date this year at some point, and the most important thing: online PvP, split screen yeah. PvP, online co-op, cross platform multiplayer. That's what we want. There you go. It's like you learn something from the past three years. You know, like. <laughs> It does recommend using a gamepad. Uh, we are going to be playing this in the after shows, and as I said, uh, so uh, yeah, there, there's one of the reasons to hey, maybe if you if you're sitting around on a Saturday, you know, like maybe we'll watch live. You get to do shit like that. So ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, done. Um, hey. Saga Sega of Sins. Yes, Sega. <laughs> Man, I wanted to like this. Uh, I tried this as well. Uh, this is the action adventure mystical storyline arcade gameplay okay okay transform into dem- demonic creatures and fight the seven deadly sins all right all right i never got to the fighting i got you, you this game beat me with the dialogue pedro <laughs> beat me with dialogue jordan i lost i guess like i can't deal with this anymore it, it won't shut up and it god oh, just be quiet and uh and yeah i quit playing i did um you you were thinking it looks a bit like uh Blasphemous! Yeah. I say it looks like Darkest Dungeon. I mean, no, it's uh, the the way that they describe it, it's like Saga of Sins is an expiatory action adventure which features a mystical storyline. Okay, so it's blasphemous. And then you look at the uh, the trailer and the screenshots, like that looks like stained glass style situation. So, yeah, it, it 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 they just really liked blasphemous and they wanted to put their own spin on it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the animation kind of looks darkest dungeony just a little bit. I can see where I can see where you maybe got that, but yeah, I really got more uh, blasphemous vibes from this. But I do like the art style, like the the stained glass look is really cool. And if you're going to be doing like a like a church themed something, then that that's one way to go about it. It fits, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, here here's your pro tip: like maybe when you get around to like doing the demos, don't spend the first ten minutes slogging dialogue at people. Like people didn't. Um, 
Yeah, dr- drop them into the gameplay proper. Right. We nobody downloaded your game to get your uh, sweet dialogue like that. Oh, was... Hieronymus Bosch. Neat. What? Hieronymus that's, Bosch. Yeah, that's apparently the main chief inspiration and in... Howling Werewolf. Fierce Gargoyle, Mighty Griffin, and Hey, it's MCP Pants. One secret <laughs> transformation. <laughs> MCP Pants. Oh no. <laughs> I like candy. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh. Yeah. Nothing crazy. To run this, as you might expect. And again, this is all part of Next Fest. Uh, did we get a poopy unicorn game? Oh, fantasy friends. That looks like. Ew, nope. I didn't know. Uh, they're eggs. Yes, egg, yeah, unicorns are born right. from eggs. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, <laughs> egg, eggs are basically chicken poop, right? <laughs> they're narwhal, so <laughs> just, just just don't let them touch your balls. Narwhal the bacon. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, guys. You've sent us like nine billion <laughs> emails, so we're gonna finally fucking talk about it. Oh my god! How many <laughs> emails? I, so it's like thirteen over the past like <laughs> it's it's a, it's a lot. No, yeah, over, over Another the past reason couple to years. Go back and listen to the pre pre super shows. Yeah, these, these these guys they send us so many emails. Uh the end of the sun team is proud to present the end of the sun. Brought to you by End of the Sun. It's a Slavic themed adventure puzzle game with some nonlinear elements, and you can travel through time. So if you basically want to be a time traveling Arthurian, you can. Um, the folks that made this also brought us the Mims, which was a god game that we talked about all the way back on LGC episode 126. Um, it's expected to come out. The demo's out for Steam next fest. Okay, we talked about it. Guys, <laughs> can, can, can you stop sending you us the emails? Now. Please? <laughs> More than just, you know, live vicariously via the emails that they've been sending. You can play the demo. <laughs> hey, man, you, you go play it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, they've it, they've been very verbose with the progress on this game. And that's good. Yes. That's good. I don't mind it. Um, It seems like there was some type of demo or we might have had access to a demo early on. Mm-hmm. I need to go back and uh, give it a look because, you know, you never know. Like, things have, like, weird origins when you look at games you're... I always think about like the first crack they took at the, like the Witcher one, right? Like that was pretty rough around the edges and to see where you can go from something like that. So, you know, mm. Mims was a little rough around the edges. Maybe, maybe they can, uh, yeah, the, 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 this one is like based around, there's like four Slavic, uh, seasonal festivals and you gotta like time travel between the three of them and solve some mysteries. Right. I don't know. It's, it seems like it could be interesting. Right. I'm, I'm not going to knock this at all. And uh, game is still in development. Minimum system. All right. So yeah, you need the Phenom X. I pro- probably have that. I think I think you actually do have that one. Yeah, I have, I have the six core equivalent of that. I, so. On the shelf over here, I think. Ah, <laughs> uh, best of luck, guys. Best of luck. Uh, one last game update before we get out of here, and uh, there's nothing like a good old fashioned like, huh? We we, we did to be unexpected. Did, um, <laughs> because you know what? I'm not surprised that Bioshock. Uh, was fixed uh, you know who's responsible for bioshock these days is it still uh virtual programming yeah they did the original port i don't know if they made this particular update but they 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 were so if i go to like developer and publisher whoever is under that category uh, 2k i think bioshock infinite yeah they accidentally a linux (laughs) they did uh linux issue has been resolved i'm not surprised that somebody might accidentally fix something on linux while fixing something else what i'm surprised is that they decided to make a mention of it and they bothered mm-hmm. to be like hey victory lap every getty high fives for all of us they were like what? what are you talking about oh that fixed that neat i mean we meant to do it our last patch to bioshock infinite on steam was intended only for windows but you filthy Linux peasants unexpectedly affected uh shared dependencies on the linux version that made the game unplayable on some versions of linux We've since identified and fixed those conflicts. Those solutions were addressed in Linux and Ubuntu 22. Yes, the Linux 22 point in. We apologize for the inconvenience to our fans. And yeah, we accidentally did a thing, but we're so sorry, you guys. And so if that <laughs> shit breaks, get fucked up. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is entirely unexpected, uh, especially if it's from... Uh, virtual programming hey pedro do you see where i'm coming from though like they they want to take credit for like you know this accidentally yeah. thing we fixed but <laughs> they're not going to take any play, blame if it breaks again <laughs> they're like hey no 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 i mean the, the update no that problem. broke it was because of this stupid 2k launcher that they started shoehorning into every single one of their games mm-hmm. so i wonder <laughs> if that was it hmm. i'm pretty i'm pretty sure that was could have been 
<laughs> it's always the fucking launchers, Ubisoft. It's, it, it's just like <laughs> DNS. It's always DNS. It's always the launcher. <laughs> it's always the launcher for your DNS server. Fucking Ubisoft, man. Like, two, if you have a launcher for like whatever, like you too, CD Projekt Red. Fuck you. Um, yeah, no. The, I'm glad at least uh, CD Projekt Red they give you a flag that you could put in the launch. Uh, like the launch flag. Okay, if you're going to do it, yes. That that is the only compromise that I'll accept. Is like you dash dash the no launch. launcher. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, or like the first time it pops up, like never show this again, and then something like that. Like, like, even yeah. like a lot of uh, Warner Brother titles, like they realize that they're like, yeah, launch your shit. You can disable it if you want. They don't advertise it, but you know somebody on the team's it, like, yeah. If, if you just needed to like set a resolution or something, yeah. then sure, why not? But like, yeah. Our resolution is to close out the Steam segment. All right. Well, coming up next, you want to do some game dev on your phone? Fuck yeah. Well, you can, Woo. I guess, if you want to. The news. Yes. It's that segment where we just, whatever pacing the show managed to uh, accrue up to this point, it's just that stop. And uh, instead, we turn the camera on. Well, we don't really turn the cameras, but the focus here is on you. You, everyone watching, everyone who decided, you know what, these guys are entertaining enough that I'm just going to provide them with the means to keep doing it. Thank you. You're all truly wonderful. Or the people are like, man, these people are idiots. I'm going to keep giving them ropes so that they hang themselves. Really appreciate you, too. Either way, whichever camp you fall under, head on over to patreon.com yeah. slash the next game. Because I got to get the fuck off Etsy. Um, <laughs> oh, no. You don't want to know, bro. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, I I, I kind of do, but we'll talk, we'll talk not, about that not later, with Danny. what we were talking about. <laughs> Anyways, patreoncom slash and Sign up. You can get into our Discord channel. You can also get in there by subbing to us on Twitch, twitchtv slash It's where we are the other six days a week. You can hang out with us. You can chat with us. You can suggest stories. If you give us uh, more money on Patreon, you can get access to our show notes. You can even buy your way onto the show if you want. Uh, you can also RSVP to game streams. I do Borderlands on Thursdays. Ben does Trackmania. Many Trackmanias. Multi track track multias. A tsunami on, of tracks on on Tuesdays and uh, and Fridays. So if you want to play some, I I, I, I I said it on Thursday. I still have no idea what the fuck Trackmania actually is. I've watched some of the streams and I still have no idea what the fuck is going. We on. did okay. Our Trackmania is you know I always bill it as that crippling addiction that you need in your life. It it's an excuse to just hang out, like get together and have like a weekly scheduled thing. You can pop in, talk mm-hmm. talk smack. We talk about movies, what's going on, Linux or whatever, and. Uh, the big thing I like to push for, and I'm dead serious when I say this, is it is a good thing. Uh, we were talking about this, actually. I think like last Tuesday, somebody showed up who was, you know, in their 50s and 60s. And like, gaming's super important, or at least some type of activity like gaming. And Trackmania is really good because it's new things every week, you know, new maps every week. And you have to think ahead, and you have to use your reflexes on top of your brain mates to make everything work. And I think activities like that keeps our generations like in much better shape. Cause I was thinking about like, you remember like a 50 year old when you were a kid, they were like one foot in the grave, man. No, you're yeah. You're either golfing or drinking, right? Like, like, like 50 year olds <laughs> were rough looking back then. You see 50 year olds now and you're like, Oh, right. That's Ali Berry. Mm-hmm. It's Ming, Ming Na Wen <laughs> still looks the same as they do in the nineties. <laughs> Uh, we, we don't though. We look a lot worse. Uh, we, uh, we got to thank our uh, newest Patreon, Kai Rilo Ren. Not a Sith Lord, maybe not even <laughs> Darth Vader's no grandkid. But. Uh, listen, listen, I'm not, I'm not Sithist. Uh, yeah, Kyra, I want to say thanks. Showing up uh, last Sunday during the mm-hmm. uh, Watch Me Mega Lightning Team cast, like popped in. Nice. I was like, yo, tell me about this DaVinci Resolve thing. And I'm like, yo, all right, that's a good question because I'm able to answer Linux questions because I got a lot of breath to kill. Um, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of those videos on our Patreon, by the way. Got to bring it back yeah. there. <laughs> there is that. Um, I just realized something that was kind of funny. I was looking for a uh, man. The, the name for this is such a tease. Rapid save horse butchered and sent to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 what, wow. but what is, but what is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ice horse. All right. All right. All right. All right. That is. We're going to watch that is, horse. Well, can, poor can, horse. Katana, uh, bubbles. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, it's uh, foam. Uh, All right. There bubbles. Ah. <laughs> and then it, then it combusts heaven. and catches fire. Lightning. I'm, I must go now. My planet needs me. Uh, we, uh, we, man, I, I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> Buy our merch. We got a store. Store.onyxgamecast.com. 
Uh, it won't cause you to float up into the heavens, but it will bind you closer to the earth because it will weigh you down because our clothes are weighted training clothes, just like Dragon Ball Z. They'll make you super strong. You can go out in public and scream and your hair will turn yellow. LGC cares. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, we got wish zones as well. You can go to <laughs> linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Ven has one. Jill has one. Pedro has one. Uh, buy some batteries or yoga mats. Oh, I need a new webcam. Sure. Pedro needs a scooter so that he can go faster. He needs speed. Yes, you can literally cause me <laughs> physical damage by getting me that scooter. Speed. <laughs> and fair warning, if you fuck up and get something for the studio, you end up back on our fine upstanding cannibal wall. That is uh, to display that you are fiscally irresponsible, but we still love you. And Frank <laughs> will guard you for eternity. Wait. We got one more person we got to think. Nubbin. We got people subbing to us on Twitch. So oh, Nubbin shit. has been doing that for 33, 33. months. It's a lot That's of months. That's a very big race up. Thank you, Nubbin. <laughs> here, here. I'll give, you, I'll give you an echo for that, Jordan. Say it again. 33, 33 months. months. Bye, 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 bye. That was horrifying. Um, <laughs> everything I did, I hoped it would be. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you know what's equally horrifying? Trying to do game development on a tablet. I don't know. I have to imagine that's exactly what the Godot mascot sounds like when it talks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Go dot editor. Go to editor. Beat up has arrived on the Play Store. It's a pre-release, and you've probably heard it before. Godot's uh, own editor built with Godot Engine. Yeah, that's right. Another fact is that Godot supports Android platform. Yes, we all know that, and this just makes me happy. Why does it make mm -hmm. me happy? Because I immediately start thinking about the kid that can't afford a PC, doesn't have access to this. But you know what? They got one of those bullshit like thirty p android phones that can barely android and they can kind of make this work and it takes forever to do something but they got a game engine now or uh maybe they're using that chromebook that they got from school which also has access to the play store it's like yeah now all of a sudden teachers themselves have more of a tool to motivate the students that may want to get into uh game making you have you, that you, you, it's I maybe. like how we had like a discussion air quotes around discussion about this in our discord earlier this week. Yeah. Uh, who, who was hating against it and all things. Yeah. I, I mean like why can't, why can't Arthur you Aaron was uh, kind of dubious on like the why, why would you want to, why, why, uh, why not? Like the, the, the whole thing is like now, now your entire Godot workflow is more or less portable. Basically the entire stack runs out of Android. They do recommend that you use a keyboard and mouse. There is some touchscreen support. You got mm -hmm. the virtual joysticks. You can do the pinch zoom and rotate and stuff, but yeah, v v I mean, it's, it's a, it's an ID, right? Like you're going to need the keyboard if you're going to be writing code. Um, but again, again, like really, what if I install the code GPT module? <laughs> Good luck running that on your smartphone. That's going to kill your battery going to be waiting a little bit as it's going through the data set. <laughs> but like, uh, but this is, this is pretty cool. Cause it actually supports like split, split screen deb debugging. You can like run the game. Natively oh, my uh, Android. Samsung yeah. SX can do that. The split screen thing. Yeah, no, but the, like this is just like in the in the editor. So well, it says it's like, only available in large form factor Android devices with multi window support, Jordan. So, so Android okay. eleven or yeah. higher. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I mean, what what I want to see is someone like actually try to crank something out on a phone just to just to see what could be done theoretically. Make uh here somebody uh yeah if you got time make flappy cockroach because remember this uh the Godot mascot <laughs> is has a cockroach body that they want to pretend that never happened. Um, because it used to be a horrifying bug that's just the remnants of it Gre Gregor Sims-esque <laughs> go ahead and pull that out uh, this, is, this is just awesome this just makes me happy, it's free, this is what I like to see in open source and this is a good way to you know, get them young, get them early right? I, and it yes. also makes me jealous as fuck because this didn't exist when I was like 8 right? and I well, immediately well, this was like our discussion that we were getting into um, I was participating in in our discord I was like, who, with such a small device, how do you do that? And I'm like, don't hit me with that because I was like, like seriously elbow deep into like the build engine, editing that on a, you know, 12.5 inch monitor at 640 yeah. resolution on a good day and uh, turned out awesome shit. So yeah, you can probably do that with your portable supercomputer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that eight core that you have in your pocket with a probably not insignificant pan frost or any of the other frost Mali GPUs. Yeah. 
<laughs> hell, hell, you could even just like plug an external display into your phone, right? Like, and actually mm -hmm. use it as a. I mean, oh. we're, I mean, I'm not saying go full on Ubuntu mobile on it, but it's still possible. No, what you right? are saying is your move, Epic. <laughs> Un -un Unreal Engine on iOS. Oh, only they, they available they can't on put iOS. It, yeah, only available. They can't on put iOS. it on iOS because their uh, iOS account got nuked. <laughs> no, you got you got only available. You got to jailbreak it and then install Fortnite and then pay us some money. Can you it. imagine being more pretentious than Apple to the point where Apple's like, get out of here? They don't like the competition. <laughs> That's all it was, really. Yeah. They were just jelly. Still, still love the fact that it ended poorly for both of them. Oh man, yes. that was yeah. the best possible that result. Was so win-win on that. <laughs> yeah, like you both lose. Eat shit. I love it when soulless corporations battle it out because, uh, yeah. Okay, so we've talked about this a couple times in the past. Uh, Amber Moon, yes. The Force Engine. Oh, the Force Engine. Yes, Hi. I completely missed that. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> Wake uh, up, Force Engine. No, I want to go back to sleep. Put I don't want to. WD forty down. <laughs> <laughs> Man, see, there, 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 there are some nice little thumbnails for you. I gave you a couple options. Right. Uh, Force Engine. You might remember back when um, Lucas Lucas Arts was shutting down, and they were hemorrhaging code. Um, this is uh, one of the results of that uh, a reverse engineered version of the force engine plays dark forces at law eventually will play outlaws and so on and so forth. Uh, but now, now uh, it finally has an official Linux support and I got to watch empty in our discord, try to get this compiled. This is good times. And according to him, uh, mouse capture does not work. Uh, MIDI support still needs some work, although Strider has mentioned previously that now it's working out of the box on Lutris and controller support is described as okay. Uh, you're still going to need to set up the build environment. They say they're considering a flat pack or snap. Please just be a flat pack or an app image. Nobody wants to install SnapD. App but, image. But hey. App image is the preferable one, but I'll, I'll deal with the flat pack. I, between between flat pack and snap, I will I will take the flat pack. That's the yeah. lesser of two evils. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's out. You can try it out uh, if you have the games via GOG or Steam, and you have Lutris. You can get this set up relatively easily and in short order. So that's cool. On Debian testing, I went ahead and took the Pepsi challenge this afternoon when I was uh, filling out some extra bits in the show notes. Um, yeah, uh, lib uh, what is it? LibRT MIDI, and I needed a lib devil. That was the only thing I didn't have in the box. You know, I got a pretty comprehensive build system on there. That was the only odd ones, and I was like, all right. And it's CMake, you know, you make the build directory, you CMake it, and you then you go, okay, I'm going to need the assets for this. And you realize that, like, I've probably bought these a billion times. Maybe. And you're like, <laughs> you hey, just you cannot know. find them. <laughs> so maybe I need to go to the forceengine.github.io documentation, which has information on where to get the uh, getting started. I can get it on GOG, which is just a link to GOG, by the way. <laughs> yep, just a link to GOG, or I can get it on Steam, which is just a link to Steam, by the way. Not Neither of these particularly helpful. I just wanted to point that out because it was like, really? Do I have to, like, Dark Forces? How much is Dark Forces this day? It's like six bucks. Yeah, nine. Which nine, is surprisingly nine. more than I would expect for a game from 1995. Just, <laughs> ah, I, I, I don't know. How, how, how much does OG Half-Life sell for these days? That's a very good question. Are, are we talking like That's a very good source, or, uh, or I <laughs> no, guess OG uh, OG Half Life, yeah, gold, gold, Just, gold source Half Life. Can you buy that on Steam? I think you still can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, survey says nine bucks. Ooh, there ten dollar. Ooh. So Dark Forces. I mean, I, I, I would I would say that Half Life is probably a better game than Dark Forces. Mayhaps. But like, it's also yeah. Half Life's a much newer game too. Yes, it's ninety yes. ninety eight versus nineteen ninety five. <laughs> but I, I, either way, you know, the three dollars is not going to make a difference. It was also done by people who knew how to make good games. Lucas Arts, yeah, two former Microsoft employees. Yeah, surprised <laughs> as I was, turned out they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Lo and behold, uh, don't worry, it is open source. So Jordan, you will be happy that eventually Star Wars uh, Dark Forces will be turned into a point and click adventure game, first person. It'll be the first one it's got. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Strider. It's on uh, fanatical. Yeah. You can buy the bundle uh, for four bucks and you get everything. There if, you go. Do, if someone actually made like a pool of radiance 
style Star Wars game. I would actually check that out. That seems very interesting Polar to me. Radiance, uh, what does that mean to the normal Norris? Like, uh, like, like uh, Legend of Grimrock, the nope. first person explorer, literally the thing. Uh, yeah, you just uh, dungeon, dungeon crawler. Crawler. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ah, got it. There you go, everybody. So Amber Moon is uh, pretty nice. A uh, dungeon crawler. <laughs> dare you it's, womp, a pretty, womp. it's a nice amiga game look at these screenshots because well i mean it straight up was a amiga game i'm like all right mm. all right that's cool why are we talking about it because somebody said around and we're like fuck all this noise we're gonna rewrite the entire thing in c sharp right yeah because why not i went why are we not why why c sharp <laughs> not rust i don't know i mean maybe we're not doing phrasing anymore but okay I downloaded the binary. I launched it. I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is pretty dope. Uh, it's interesting to see. Like, you know what? It here's here's how I look at old Amiga games or old games like this. I'm like, how does this compare to a modern hipster pixel? Right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, if I if I downloaded this off Steam, I'm like, oh, or would I say, oh, they're really trying to be authentic to the source material? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this passes that sniff test. I'm like, oh, it's still playable. I mean, yeah. you you can uh, you can. You too can become the goddamn Batman. That was my character. <laughs> the uh, the the original the original game actually. I, I, I was doing a little bit of research on it. Apparently, it was one of like one of the more larger RPGs, and so you had to uh, switch floppy disks actually quite a bit between area transitions. So now you can actually experience this without having to switch every switch disks every thirty seconds. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Got a lot. I mean, because you know these things were really originally running on the line with the Motorola sixty eight hundred. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the A500 Amigas, and uh, I cloned the Git repo. Like, I guess it's got like Android versions and all because there's build instructions. Good luck that play your own adventure there. The uh, Git repo is like over a gig, man. I'm like, mm. what the hell's going on here? But like, whatever, I didn't care that much to build it. <laughs> <laughs> Go grab it. No, I think you, this one you can tell that it's very much a product of the time because the game only ever takes up half the screen. The rest is UI. Yeah, it's like massive UI, like massive character portraits. Well, the character I, I, I wonder, animation down when the I was <laughs> indoors, when you first start off and like walking around your little room, like that looks really good. Then you walk outside to the world map and motherfucker, you're not animated a bit. You're just static. <laughs> the, these, uh, these old games too, I wonder, um, because uh, they didn't, they had uh, not a lot of space for the disc. So they actually came with like physical books that all, had all like the game description stuff. So I wonder if Amber Moon was one of them, or if, um, if if there's like a PDF there, or if it's actually integrated into the game properly. Uh, you know, it came with a trainer. Really? Yeah, a walkthrough. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's but you already we're... had this discussion with Strider. I didn't have a discussion with Strider. Strider tried to correct me being right. I mean, yeah, that's what a trainer was in 1998. Uh, yeah, text walkthrough. Like, yeah, all right, it's a cheat engine. Walk all the way through it. Yeah. Uh, the uh, repack of the Dark Sun SSI games also have that just because it's like, yeah, how the fuck are you going to know? And this this was back in the time when game developers were hostile to players because it's like, you bought this game. Now I'm going to trap you in here forever so that mm. you have to play this and not buy another game. <laughs> I mean, we had those collections growing up of games that we just couldn't beat, didn't know. Like, that's where I get stuck. I'm yep. looking at you, Sierra, with like King's Quest games. Like, there was... <laughs> Definitely too. I can think of like, yeah, I could get to this point and you were lost. There was yep. no internet to plug it in. And by the time internet rolled around, I was like, I don't care. The Sierra was pretty bad with the, uh, oh, you didn't pick up that thing that was literally one pixel wide at the very first screen. You didn't rub you this against the, the third tree over here. And, <laughs> um, you know, can't finish the game. No, no sorry. Just soft locked yourself. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what's a little what's, unreal, a little less retro. Oh, yes. A little less. Still in the 90s, but more towards the end on this one. Uh, this is Unreal Steel with an E at the end. Dawn. Steely uh, Dawn. Steely Dawn. Steely Dawn. Yes. It is a community map pack or episode, I suppose you could call it, for the single player version of the first Unreal. It comes with eight levels and uh, eight deathmatch levels. Uh, it, it is a prequel to uh the events of unreal basically you're the first person to land on um what's the planet called navi nuvi something like that uh sweeney yes (laughs) planet sweeney uh and you're the first human there and you have to deal with 
basically everyone else, the native aliens, the other alien races that are trying to invade, and set everything up for the events of the... Oh, there you go, the four-titted um, <laughs> deity lady. <laughs> Whatever that planet's got going on, I like it. Hey, that's uh, that, that's that puzzle from Miss. <laughs> yeah, that was a, so this this is also apparently uh, this was worked on and it was apparently leaked via archive.org, but this was going to be a scrapped content pack for the OG Unreal that was uncovered and restored. Uh there was there's actually like not a lot of it fully complete, so the team here have like gone and flushed out a lot of the levels, which is pretty neat. I love seeing like I I love this whole idea of like Let's just find old copies of Abandonware and actually finish them. That 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 shit gets me. Hard. Very good. So very realistic. Good. <laughs> I mean, I look like that, like IRL, pretty much. It's, it's <laughs> like looking into a mirror. Yeah, the, the 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 camera just puts on a really nice filter because Jordan's just polygons. I'm just looking yeah. at um, <laughs> we not like super recently. That a lot of this is missing, like shading and stuff like that. Unreal, the original Unreal. Hold right the fuck up. Um, considering you know how old I don't it is think you. I I ever played the original Unreal. It, it was wild because it was like Doom and Quake, but it had this thing called a plot, mm -hmm. which like it had a story going on. You like you crash land. You're like, what? Oh, this is like and, a uh, they tried. Uh, they did the thing where they tried to make the story sort of optional, except if you didn't read the logs, you had fuck all idea where you were. Well, going. I mean, yeah, you still had to get from like point A to point thirteen, but. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, it was completely different because, you know, we had Wolfenstein and we had Doom and I think Quake had come out like right around there, like OG Quake, but all of those were just, you know, I mean, I guess Wolfenstein kind of had a plot going on, but Doom. D D yeah. D Doom and Quake has, yes, very, very, I mean, the, the, literally the plot of Doom 2 is the demons have killed his rabbit and now they all have go to forth and wreck shit. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is, but yeah, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Grab some keys, right. And run mm -hmm. around and do that. Yes. Like. Unreal came out and was like, no, nah, man, we got this plot thing. Then we discovered CTF face later on. And like, <laughs> yeah. And then we discovered <laughs> then Unreal we Tournament. we discovered Half-Life. That was the big one. Half-Life mm, basically went. the real story in, right? Well, now every um, mainstream uh, AAA first-person shooter has to be Half-Life. Mm. Uh, I've seen the video comparisons. Well. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the video comparisons. It's like from the moment that Half-Life released, you could tell like... Uh, from each of the like big plot moments that happen in Half Life, each of the scenes that, 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 that seems that to be a story beat remember, that yeah, it gets every single one. one you can find it replicated in newer games. Okay, you see, I'm unfamiliar with tribes. The only thing I know about tribes is uh, that was uh, what was uh, you, you remember this mm -hmm, Revenge of yeah. the Cats Ethernet mm -hmm. was supposedly very tribes like. Mm -hmm. Was the, but I don't think Tribes had a story, did it? Uh the first couple did, uh, but uh, then it became like a tournament shooter. There was like, like Star Savage. Siege Tribes. <laughs> yeah. Tribes. What I knew about Tribes is it got like it was one of the early games that just got like super massive and just poof, disappeared. Yeah. Like I the, want to know what happened to the point of like I might look that up one day because it just. I, just I, I, think, it. I think yeah, I think just like stuff like Unreal and other shit just came out, right? Like mm. yeah, but I, maybe it was Quake Three Arena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but like, uh, de definitely, like you bring up tribes, and there are some some OG FPS. Guys I didn't that bring are up like, tribes. Oh yeah, yeah. tribes. Trodor brought, brought up tribes. Yeah, yeah. Read I, uh, the the royal you, not you specifically. Then how <laughs> dare you, person? <laughs> how <laughs> dare I? I don't know. I'm gonna make me. I'm gonna throw you on some spikes instead. Coming up next, I I couldn't get this game to run in Emacs Emacs, but it does have Lisp build instructions, so maybe there someone good. We go. We're throwing chairs at Candria. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where this week Jordan talks a lot at the beginning and not a lot at the very end. This week we're taking uh, this week we're taking a look at Candria, developed by Shirakumo Games, uh, built in Lisp and available for sale for twenty dollars US. What is the Chairquisition? Well, funny you ask. It's a part of the show where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linuxes, running fairly different hardware, uh, and then we give you a Emacs-based Control X lawn chair. Uh, score based on the uh, quality of the game. One chair means that it's trash. Four chairs means that it's great. 
What is Candria, you might be asking? Well, explore a ruined open world of caverns and settlements. Hack and slash your way through missions, patrol, repair, scavenge, choose your quests and dialogue, or go fishing, forge mushrooms, and race the clock. The old world is gone. The future is up to you. We got to thank Shirakumo Games for sending us thank keys you. via Curator Connect. And I'm just now feeling I'm- Pedro right now, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know those feels, bro. Yeah. And so on, yeah, it's, it's rough. So I guess I'll get started on Fedora 3764 bit with the R9 3900 X and the GTX 1080 Ti does not launch an Emacs. Unfortunately, please send us some hate mail. If you do manage to get this running under Emacs, I would really love to see some screenshots. Uh, launches out of the box on regular Linux, uh, holds about 68 UHD. Hey, graphical action, actual graphics options. Uh, you can go full screen. You can select the resolution, all good stuff. Um, correct button prompts too. When you look at the controls menu. Uh, so if you're using a DualShock 4, you get the PlayStation button prompts. Always nice. Soundtrack is all right. Competently done. Not super in the way. And the visuals, uh, you can see them right there if you're watching the video version. They're pretty solid. Nothing too revolutionary. Uh, but, you know, they got the job done. Fun? It's okay. You play a robot waitress with the sword who comes to help a colony of survivors in a post-apocalyptic or a post-apocalypse with the power of jumping, climbing, and stabbing. And Ven mentioned if, uh, when we got uh, keys for this a couple weeks ago, um, he said something that kept replaying in the in my head in that, like, this game is unfocused. And it is, because it could be a very neat N- Metroidvania or a cool precision platformer, but it's trying to do both at the same time and thus is kind of just mediocre at both. Um... Like, the combat in there is kind of meh. There's a decent system in place. Uh, heavy light attacks, directions, and speed determine what you do. Um, it's reasonably well. The, it doesn't feel super great. Like, the 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 swings don't feel super impactful. Um, and the, 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 the hits, when you take them, it just kind of blurs the screen. It doesn't really feel too impactful either. Uh, the, the exploration kind of gets nerfed because there are these long, spiky levels that you have to go through sometimes there's stuff at the other end oftentimes they're just dead ends uh but you gotta go through them again if you want to um if you want to get back to where you were started uh and you're gonna have to be doing this quite a bit because part of the game loop is if you got to go from point a to point b you have to actually discover the route a la hollow knight unfortunately uh traveling is beset by this if you're watching the video version Um, literal trial and error you you can (laughs) genuinely hear the like fuck this game (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and like it has some c- Celeste style accessibility options, so you can turn on invincibility and infinite dash. But the spikes still insta kill you, so yeah. the the infinite dash you just got to be really good at like aiming the infinite dash. Otherwise, yeah, I can, you're I, I can get killed stuck. by different shit. Um. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so you you have these two different sorts of uh, games that are at odds with each other. You want you have a game that in- wants you to explore, and then you have a game that sort of punishes you for exploring and encourages you to take the fastest route so that you don't spend time in spiky bullshit hell. Um, and I don't know, I feel that there's maybe some gameplay stuff you could do to fix this. You could have like, um, you could have like better fast travel. You could have some sort of waypoint system. You could have more, more frequent, uh, save points because they're pretty few and far between, especially in some of these dead ends. So I, I, I don't know. I feel this is more of a game design issue than, say, anything technical. So that's why it gets mentioned in the fun section. I'm going to give it two chairs. It's all right. But there's there's definitely some good stuff here. But it needs some work and it needs some focus. Ladies and gentlemen, now here you're asking yourself, how does this run on Debian testing? I'm here to tell you about it. Because everything launched out of the box, man. On 3060, it's pixel-powered perfection. You might expect it. 2160p, no complaints except for the one I got. I'll tell you about that in a second. X clone controller, Xbox S1, got tricky with it right out of the box again. So happy to see in 2023. Plenty of sound and graphical options, as Jordan mentioned. V sync and frame limiting, however, do not stick. Do not stick. Every time I start the game, I have to go into settings uh, before I play. So my 3060 is not at 100% generating 1100 frames for this game. Fix that, please. A little bit annoying. A little bit, but yeah. We need to talk about the fun, you know. In Special K, you play as an uh, amnesic robot. You start off with all the abilities intact, though, so no ability gating. And I'm really happy to see that. And I know, I need to tell you this, it doesn't pull some Symphony of the Afternoon bullshit on you either, man. You're like, hey, this game's going to be, oh, wait, where'd all my cool stuff go? No, you get to keep it right out of the gate. I like this at first, but you know what? I kind of su- really realized like, oh, this is why this progression systems and games, that's why all this matters because you're just missing that little something. 
after a couple hours in, you know, like I kind of wish I was getting newer skills and better skills, but when you start with everything out of the gate, you got to live with that. What caught me though, out of that gate was the art style, because I want you to imagine 2d hipster pixel reimaging of near automata on a budget. And you're an Android full of crazy combat Kung Fu. Then there's fishing because you can't have a 2d hipster pixel reimaging of near automata on, on a budget without fishing. Right? That's why I'm 100% confident Calling Special K what it is, a Celeste clone. Now, um, that's kind of where our problem is. That's kind of where our problem is. Because if you're going to ape a mechanic from a game, you got to get it right. Or you got to get it, you got to improve on the original recipe. You got to do something a little bit different to put your own spin, put your own flavor on it. You know, layers of fear Fuck that simple equation right up when they added Mr. Grabby Hand to the door opening simulator. You know, layers of doors, because I saw that hand and layers of fear and i'm thinking hey this is like a frictional game this is like amnesia i can just interact with everything in the environment and no i couldn't i was very disappointed and i'm not entirely convinced that it's the player's fault for making an assumption like that regardless it's a bad foot to start off on and anyway this game i mean this game plays like celeste if, how many times if you watch the video version it captures the same way I watching Pedro play this. I'm having the same emotional feels as watching anybody speed run Celeste when they fuck right up and like, Oh no, it's turned into the meat game and just smash head against wall until you get through it. But okay. Uh, it is Celeste right down to the spiky bullshit. And by plays like Celeste, I mean, it, it, it plays like Celeste is 20 years past her prime and she's attempting an ill fated comeback. Like, like bam from, um, you ever watched him try to skateboard? Ooh. Oh, from Jackass? Yeah. Bam Bargera? Yeah. Oh, boy. That's kind of where I'm at with this. That's how that's how our protagonist controls in this game compared to the uh, original Celeste. I get about four hours into the game. Somewhere around the Devil's Grow Farm. And hey, hey, judge me. I mean, the floor was made out of lava and the spikes turned into green bushes. And anyway, that's where I tapped out. I got tired of playing Celeste. And I got, to, well, I got tired of playing a bad Celeste clone. And at that point... I was spending like 90% of my time navigating what I didn't like, which was the Clooney Celeste bits, not running around exploring the cities and all this big world to play around with because I enjoyed my time exploring the world uh, and the, uh, the combat. Like, hey, I'll call it what is it? Serviceable. Do with a little bit less dialogue, but you know, that's mainly because it was just more talking versus explaining. I wasn't really learning a lot from the dialogue. And um, I really did not enjoy the near inspired scrap collectathon where you just collect all the random bullshit in here and you end up with stuff that you don't know if you should keep or shouldn't keep. Or should you just sell all of it or hang on to certain other bits? Had no idea. Anyway, basically at the end of the day, take that shot. If you boil everything down, I got one point I want you to take away from this game. And that's fuck your safe system. Period. <laughs> safe system sucks, man. Like what the hell? The absolute hell. What, would you disagree, either of you? No. No. Okay. No, I'll get into that more. <laughs> okay. Also, I want to know, did somebody like make a sitting animation and you had to justify a reason to put it in the damn game because why is there benches? They, we, we talked about that in the pre super shows. And, like, why? There's benches to sit down on and there's like a little cutesy sitting animation. What do the benches do? Fucking nothing. Abandoned mechanic. <sighs> oh, uh, two chairs. I really, really, really want to like this game. I do, but you could you get to dial back the Celeste shit and uh, like put more game game in it. Pedro, remember? yeah, uh, it, it, there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, the over here on the desktop with the RX sixty seven hundred XT and the fifty eight hundred X three D launches out of the box on the Steam Deck. It launches out of the box. It holds whatever um, FERPs you have. As long as you're using GameScope. Uh, also, you don't get Steam Overlay unless you're using GameScope. Uh, and um, somehow uh, Steam Input still works just fine. And you have to enable Steam Input for uh, direct input controllers. Uh, otherwise, they don't work at all. <laughs> um, you'll pardon if you're watching the video versions. I, I can only apologize uh, it's not the fault of the controller. That's very much my fault and me realizing what I would have to go through. Uh, so yeah, there's there's a lot of needless death. Prepare yourselves. Uh, <laughs> the yeah, 
Mango Hut would have none of it. Uh, on the desktop, I couldn't get it to work with or without GameScope. Uh, on the Steam Deck, it works as it usually does. So I guess they, whatever they're doing that's stopping it from working on the desktop, at least it works properly on the deck. Uh, the, um, let's see. Where, where am I on the notes? I lost myself. There we go. The music. The, mu <laughs> the music, it. It sounded very familiar, like a certain other game that Ven already mentioned. And the graphics are serviceable hipster pixels. They convey what's happening, but that that's about it. As for the fun, eh, um, I see what they're doing with the music and the Metroidvania style quests. Uh, it, the uh, developers clearly wanted to ship Nira Tomato and Celeste so bad that they already picked out the dresses. Uh, thing is, I tolerated Celeste because you only had to go through the really hard bits once in one direction. I don't know enough One Direction lyrics to make the joke, but there you go. Uh, in Candria, if you have the gall to go off the beaten path and explore the game, which it seems to want you to do, and then you get stuck in a, um, basically, the, just a dead end, and you have to do the really hard bit all the way back. That's not, that's not good. I tolerated Celeste. I tolerated Celeste because you only had to do those hard bits the once. But no, can't do it. And the game doesn't autosave, uh, which seems to be deliberate because they tell you right at the top, the game doesn't autosave, so save frequently. And I can see why it doesn't autosave, because you go down to, you go down a really hard path, and then you find yourself uh, stuck there because you either can't or don't want to do the thing all the way back, so you just quit the game and restore the save. At which point you've wasted 30 minutes of my time, and if a video game is making me feel like my time is being wasted, especially when I'm doing the thing that I like to do in video games, which is going off the beaten path, something's gone awfully wrong. I really like Nier Onomatopoeia, and uh, I see what Candria is trying to do. I just don't like it. It's perfectly serviceable game, technically speaking, but I don't like it. Two chairs. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. Um, it it, it kind of reminds me like um, what what you said then earlier about uh, a couple weeks ago about how like this game has stuff that other games have shit. in it. Yeah, for, for just for the sake of it, like Hollow Knight <laughs> has benches, so this game has benches. Near Automata forces you to do manual saves, so this game forces you to do manual saves. There isn't really a lot of thought as to the role of the system. Excuse me, it's near Automata. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> they're, they're, near they're, a tomato. They're, <laughs> near Mama Manamana. Do, 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 do. There isn't really much thought applied to like where the actual game systems will fit in the overall game itself, which create creates this kind of friction that we're, we're talking about. Right. Well, I mean, the only reason I'm angry at the game is because like, I want this to be better. Like there's, yes. there's, 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 there's something just, it, it's here. It's here. It's like, they got all the right parts. It's just not stuck together. Right. Uh, the curse of the Raven scribe <laughs> dilemma. Right. Like, everything about this game is like, custom design as you know vin stone made you know it, it's the pixel metroidvania combat exploration fuck you hard platforming i'm like all those things like yes and I, i'm just not feeling like it. four i in four hours for me to put into one game being doing this adult bullshit where i don't have a lot of time <laughs> That's a lot of time for me to play one game that i'm not streaming all right let's not talk about like track mania i'm playing that with other people that's content and to get four hours into the game and just go, Nope, I'm done. That that's yeah. what happened. Like there wasn't, it was like, I'm tired of the Celeste bullshit because you got to nail that. Right. And again, I was talking to the pre-show, like I watched like a one hour documentary or it might've been like 30 minutes somewhere in there. It was exceptionally long because it was only covering the movement in Celeste and how much work went into that to make that work and feel the way it did and control mm -hmm. the way it did. This is like, it, it stayed next to the Celeste friends, cousins, uncles, roommates, brother, and had it described to them. Yeah. It copied Celeste's homework, but didn't actually understand what it was doing yeah. because yeah, th 
Celeste as a platformer is really good because they wanted to do one thing and do it really well. And that's what they did. It was the movement. It was the level design. It was the progression. They did it really, really well. This it's being focused. Is, I mean, this is trying to go yeah. a lot of places. <laughs> it's, um, it's got its hand in a lot of pies and not actually eating any of you them. You know, it admittedly, like, Hollow Knight's really good at the combat and sitting on benches. Yes. But it, it, doesn't, ha- it doesn't have the precision platforming shit. Or when it does, it's, like, a very, very minor aspect of that overall thing. There's, like, one area of in each of the, the biomes that will give you, like, fuck you hard platforming. But that that's one area out of the hundreds yeah. that the game has. <laughs> it it honestly seems a little cargo culty to me in that, like, yeah, the, these, these systems are in place because other games have them. What did they do for this game? I don't know, but other games have them, so we better include them. Um, I, well, I mean, there is the one crime it does commit, though. And that is? It cost 1.23 Hollow Knights. <laughs> it is expensive, yes. It is 1999 <laughs> versus 1499. Indeed. Uh, So, I don't know. Like, I'm sitting here, like, waiting. You know, I'm still paying attention to updates. I'm still paying, but the the vibe I've gotten from this is you, we are up against, and I say this, somebody who's been covering video games for the decade, past decade, like it or not. um, You kind of get these feels of, like, uh, this is my fucking artistic vision. This is how I want the game to fucking be. Fuck all shells, which I can respect. But I, that's what I'm, that's like but what it's, I'm aware. It's, it's I'm not, not going to make your game good. No, I'm yeah. not expecting shit to get changed. And I'm like, that's cool. Like you do you. Like, I'm not going to get upset about that, but I'm, I'm just saying anybody potentially looking into this going, oh, maybe these things, like, I, I don't think anything's going to be changing here. I think this is how, you know, you're going to get bug fixes and stuff like that. But maybe, maybe Candria too will have some of these improvements or maybe someone will take this and like make another list game. Yeah. All right. Right. Make well, Kendria to 3D. Go go full on with that uh, near automata thing. Risk just, of tomatoes. Just, 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 just remake near automata. Coming <laughs> up next, we gotta talk about mice and gerbils and other robin, rodents. Robot rodents. Robins. Robitus. Robins. The end is once again upon this very podcast. Yes, if you're listening to us while doing something, don't worry. Something better will probably come up next, unless you're listening to just us, which again, Look out for why that would car. you do that to yourself? <laughs> but hey, uh, if you have some comments, and if you are doing the whole just listen to LGC back to back, hit the contact button and uh, let us know. Uh, LinuxGameCast.com is the website, but you probably already know that. Uh, the form is at the bottom. There's some caveats at the top. LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to. Just leave us your name, your email, a subject, and a message. Don't include URLs, please. Uh, <laughs> Star Trek. Uh, your voice is your password, but in writing, that doesn't really work. Well, text to speech and whatnot. The, the, there, there, there was there was one uh, thing on like the Riker googling Mastodon where it's like, why do we why do we say our passwords out loud now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's just like the, the Federation enemy watching, like yes, yeah, <laughs> like no, nobody tell them, nobody tell them. Voice identification. Um, yeah, one A two B three C blam. Yeah, Alpha Omega Rock blam. Like fuck. Literally, one of the self-destruct codes was zero 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 zero. <laughs> you know who's gonna guess that, right? You right. skip over that. <laughs> they just left it at default. <laughs> they never changed it. Make that shit some luggage combinations, baby, and you'll right. never have to worry about it. So we got one little bit of hate mail this week. So we do encourage the people. We're kind of mining it down. Once we get down with what we have in the hate mail inbox, we'll go check out some comments. And this came from a YouTube comment, I think. Yeah, this is from Fortato. Uh, and they say, anyone else notice Valve updated their SDL shared library, libSDL2? Mouse sensitivity used to be half for me on Linux native Valve games compared to Windows for many years. Windows 1.0 to Linux 0.5? Now they're the same. I They've changed it multiple times. Uh, I noticed it while I was playing um, CSGO many, many years ago um, that... I was used to it because, yes, coming from Windows to Linux, mouse sensitivity was different. Mouse acceleration in Windows is 
even worse than it is on Linux. Uh, but, you know, ironically enough, uh, you just untick the box and that's it. No more mass acceleration. Do you know what makes Linux, mass acceleration better, Pedro? <laughs> I, I'm going to say mass acceleration a lot more. Um, on Linux, if you wanted to disable mass acceleration, uh, you'd have to create uh, an XOR conf um, entry specifically for the mouse and can, can, can define we shorten the it? acceleration. Can, it, can we call it like max acceleration? <laughs> Ma- acceleration? Mouse acceleration? Mouse acceleration. Mouse acceleration. Mouse deceleration. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's macular degeneration. <laughs> macular degeneration. <laughs> but yeah, no, they changed it. I remember um, five years ago or so, they did a big change and Three a lot of people were going, ah, oh, that's a lot closer yeah. to how it was on Windows. All I could tell is that, yes, that was different. But oh, now I, I always want like enabled- little smoked glasses for my mouse. <laughs> I always enable raw mouse input in the Valve games. It's just better because it just mm. inherits whatever configurations you have on your desktop environment. So here's one of my real questions, though. I mean, to this point, um, I, I've been raw dog and Linux for like 30 years. I just, when I think about my input device, every time I plug it in, I hook it up, especially with the new one. I'm like, I'm just going to get used to it. That That's the beginning and end. I don't fuck around with like uh, acceleration or speed I mean, I mean sensitive got, the sensitivity the i will fuck around with because you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i got, got like low got, medium and high but outside of that that's it i don't go into any type of my i'm sure xfc has settings for acceleration and all that but it I got, or, or it's, like it's, in it's, game it's in the whisker menu you just got to click on the mouse somebody's <laughs> going to be saying um hey what, you know in game do you want to use like x input like raw whatever do you want to uh, oh, you know, smoothing and I, like, I don't know, whatever defaults on that's one I use. Yeah, it's it's mostly down to I don't shooters. assume I'm good enough, Pedro, to, for that to matter. <laughs> I don't think it's going to play in. That probably is because of how much Counter-Strike Source I played back in the day that I became aware of it. But it is, if you're playing an FPS, sometimes the mouse sensitivity just feels wrong. So and when that happens to me, it's like no, 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 no. We gotta oh, go no. have a look at mouse acceleration and whatever is it's doing because it needs Pedro, to stop. If we have a <laughs> FPS. What's FPS backwards? SPF. Then what if we make another money making, like power washing simulator where you just put sunscreen on people's backs? This is all the game. <laughs> SPF simulator. L- 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 lotion simulator. <laughs> SPF lo- factor, lo- like yeah. a, lo- yeah. lotion yeah. simulator, lo- lo- lotion rubber pro. Now Dude, on Steam, it, it can be a PS5 VR2 exclusive. We 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 got the we got the naughty DLC. You can rub some lotions oh. on some. Uh, is the, you know, the, never the mind. PS VR2 yeah. uh, going to be like ten percent faster on PlayStation Five than it is on a 3090 Ti? Oh no! For for v, for VR lotion simulator, you need like a full body diving suit with like sensors well, on. Well, I mean, it, it depends. It's asymmetrical, so you need the other suit to be lower the basket, right? <laughs> right. Well, I, I, I'm, yeah, so you, but I mean, you're just standing on the same floor because it's all in virtual reality. So like when he's pretending to be in the hole, the other one's lowering the best. Yeah. It's real. It's real funny to watch from the outside. What? I, I'm just saying, man, like, I mean, those Twitch streams uh, probably need a new category, but uh, yeah. <laughs> PlayStation. The East. That, that, that's what I'm saying. PlayStation call us. I got ideas, man. Um, yeah, Eric, Eric Hartman has completely ruined Buff- Buffalo Bill for me, though. That's, yeah. that's the problem. <laughs> this, this is the problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. You have to put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell. Uh, let's go ahead and cue the music. You can always find us kicking off around 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. If you're one of the beautiful party people that make this show possible, help finance this distortion, this nightmare train, hop in our Discord an hour beforehand for our pre pre super shows and or listen to it after the fact. It's part of your patron pledge. You get a custom RSS feed with almost four hours, sometimes more than four hours of this nonsense brought to you each and every week. We do thank you for your patronage. Now, if you want to get a hold of me, I'm still on Twitter. Never left. Don't call it a comeback at Vinstone at Twitter. And uh, if you like the Federated timeline, mass.linuxemcast.com, I'm just at Vin hanging out, posting some stuff over there as well. I'm Jordan, and I'm so, so very dry. You can come moisturize me by following me on Twitter at Brody Masterize Pool. him. Masterize me at Frojo <laughs> at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Uh, nope, my mind is in the gutter now, so you can find me Loom on... me up. Um, <laughs> 
You can find me inside a 50 gallon uh, <laughs> drum uh, of lube uh, on Twitter at unaccounted for because that's still Nothing there and I'm still no. waiting for the fire, but it's apparently it's not coming. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Time for some credits, ladies and gentlemen. Unlike Deadpool, we don't have brains. <laughs> and we don't really regenerate. <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, <laughs> Poorly. I mean, I mean, not like lens and shit. But. Do- Doctor Who style. We got to yeah, think. We'll walk around and... the house with a baby legs. That's true. We got to thank our executive <laughs> producers, Barbara M. Scott Michaud, Tom McCass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer Kaku, yours, Pebble, Tomaj, and Hakim, and our little Nikki fan, Super Dusto. The one super dust out and uh, Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, System T, Dunsing Jew, Oogie One, and Kyrillo. Hey, Plenty of death notes like Novocaine, Basil, John, Romero, Marcin, Rene, Leonardo, Dak, M, Smash, Chris, Steve, Doom 2, Steven, More Steve, Dirty Dean, Gaming, uh, Ro, Turnover, Cheese the Bacon, M, Fox Dogs, Fine, Oil of Hope, Jalon, Alex, and, uh, Aromatic Dev. Ooh, got it. Sharelings. We got Jason B, Lord Maka, AJ, Brock, Giovanni, Joanna, Gronk, Delonka, Apollo, Greg, Costa, Lex North New. Ranger, Craig, Alejandro, Tom, Brain Prey, <laughs> Daniel, AJ, Tom, Sacred Squint, Egg, Squint, <laughs> Squint more, can you read no. it? Biatko, d I need more 4Ks, 11Ds, um, <laughs> all of our fine upstanding animals. Keep being awesome. We'll see you again next week. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, die in that fire. Bye-bye. I'll just see you Five dudes.